My replacement power supply has arrived. This is a 48 volt DC power supply. This power supply here was an 8 amp power supply. So this isn't too much smaller. I'm gonna try this thing out and uh, see if it works. I'm really curious more about the um, level of filtering if this is going to induce any noise. I doubt it. And today a lesson in you get what you pay for. I hooked this thing up, I think I did a video about it a while ago, and it sat on top of the thing for a while, and a little while back, or a couple days ago, I thought, you know what, I should fire that thing up and phone myself again, because I'm feeling lonely. And so I did. Um, but I got myself some new wire, so I'm, uh, so I'm not using old household wire, and wired this thing in properly, and turned it on, and it made that lovely sound that switching power supplies make when they're being short-circuited. Uh, I think they call it it's a crowbar, crowbar as they all put it. It's a protective mode they go into. They go tick, 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 tick. And uh, it, uh, it doesn't work. So you usually have to power the thing off, find the short, fix it, and turn it back on. Um, so I've already been in this once. Had a look, wasn't too impressed. Uh, put it back together, it uh, didn't work. So I hit it and it started working. Great sign. So I thought I'd go back in again. And the first interesting thing, that I'd like to point out. Oh, isn't it lovely? Brand new. Uh, I still can't get the thing out because the heat sinks. Oh, I forgot a screw. But, you know, living life on the edge. All right, so there's something has been sparkling there. Something ain't right. Right there. <laughs> Doesn't smell burnt. Oh dear. Can you see? Can you see? Anyway, none of the leads are trimmed properly, so they're all sticking out. Um, my nice flush cutting cutters um, aren't so nice anymore, so I, I, they're not here. They're not with us anymore. Um, so I just took a screwdriver and just kind of selectively bent all the leads so that they're not um, a problem anymore. So you didn't do a great job. Anyway, I just belt, bent them so that they were uh, laying on top of like potentials. Could do the big Clive and talk about separation slots. So that's arcing or batter on the plastic um, shield there appears to be definitely ooh, coming from this right resistor there doesn't work when the capacitor is not connected cool um, let this be a life lesson what I was trying to say is this capacitor is not connected that solder joint I wouldn't even call it cold or bad it's just not there um, so that could be a problem Done. I spent a little while looking at this. Um, the critical path as far as the DC side of this thing is actually quite simple. On the positive side, it goes from the transformer um, through this really poorly constructed inductor here. Uh, um, through a shunt, which is what that mystery jumper was um, for measuring current, and then to the positive output terminals. I am seeing basically between this output here on this side of the transformer, if you know what I'm getting at, if you know what I'm saying. This stuff, this area, this is the critical DC path. So if something's shorting out, it is in this area. Uh, there doesn't look like there's anything there, there's not much here, and except for this capacitor falling out, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. It looks like it was, oh, oh! All right. Um, see how I just made my voice really low? I tend to sound nasally. I just found something. Come here. This is not a magnetized screwdriver. There's a little ball of solder there, but more importantly, a little piece of, look at that. Piece of, un. right there. You can hear it. Zoom, enhance. No, it's not happening. Whatever. It's a piece of a lead that was trimmed and left to just roll around. 
So, the only problem that I guess, well, I'm assuming that's why when I hit it, it started working. It's the opposite of reduction. Increasing of hazardous substances? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Well, maybe not. Uh, yeah, this feels like lead-free solder. So I am now unlead freeing it with some good old fashioned 60-40. Is it bad to mix lead free with regular solder? I don't know. I can't say I'm too worried. Pretty sure it's uh, hard to go right with this piece of uh, this lovely fine piece of engineering. I'm just checking if there's any other crappy joints I should be paying attention to, and there are. I've actually switched to uh, the 6337, the Eutectic alloy. Uh, but this isn't that. I just grabbed what I had in the box with my soldering iron today. Um, but I have to say I like the uh, Eutectic stuff. Have you ever seen percussive desoldering? Oh no! Oh, that's ah, all the same trace. Well, still, let's clean that up. There we go. Should be back in business. Uh huh. Well, that sounds good. Oh, the fan on there. Oh, the fan does. I guess it kind of half ass cools that heatsink. Uh, let's see, everything's looking the way it should. One of these settings, there we go, 20, 200. Mm -hmm. Oh, there goes my power cord. All right. Uh, 48.4, but uh, oh, that's good. Uh, let's power this down, plug the fan in, put it back together and hook it up and try it out. <gasps> Good old Murphy's Law. If, uh, drop the screw. And I've spent the last, I don't know, 10 minutes looking for it. People say, oh, if the job isn't done right, if you don't have parts left over. No, that's... No. If you've lost parts, you've done the job wrong. I also found some um, screws and a nail. And, uh, yeah, it was a quite a successful search. All right, got the uh, butt set out. I've got the uh, power supply in its CSA improved enclosure. Uh, yeah, we'll keep looking up that way. Uh, and uh, ready to make some phone calls. This phone doesn't work yet. Ah, wire strippers. And now the moment of truth. Huh. Oh, it's not ticking. That's a good sign. Let's uh, pick up a phone here. Ooh. Hear that? Can you hear that? Dial tone. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, let's try. Oh, wrong number. Try that again. Uh, I think I have. Nope. Try to figure out what I've wired. There we go. That's the phone over there. Uh, now this one, there's no um, earpiece. Huh? That's interesting. Ah, uh, 
phone ain't, this phone ain't right. I don't think a missing earpiece would make it. I think I stuffed that on 37. I like sevens. There's no earpiece, so. Ooh. Uh, that's neat. The ringer's dead. Probably been disconnected. Well, that's neat. You can't hang up. Nope. Huh. Well, it's a lot more tolerable without the big noisy power supply. This thing seems to be doing just fine. Where the heat sinks are on the end here. Yeah, it's cold. I don't think this is a high draw for this thing. I could probably get away with disconnecting the fan because it runs all the time. And whenever, oh, that's good. Whenever I uh, pick up, it's hard to hear over all the, the interrupter. Actually, here if I let it time out. Nope, if I. Got out? Hear that? Fans giving her. And when I drop the call, slows right down. Oh, now it should slow down. This thing's supposed to drop very little power on idle. I think I mentioned that before. That's better. My plan is to have it running all the time, which is part of the reason I wanted to vet the power supply. I wanted to open this thing up and look inside anyway. After a 15 year hiatus, the Lightfoot Telephone and Telegraph Company is uh, back alive. Um, now I'm getting carried away with installing phones, but I've realized something neat. I've only got one working selector on this system, um, which means only one phone at a time gets dialed on. I think that's the right spot. Uh, so if I pick this phone up and then pick up another phone, well, that's the worst example. Let's do this again. It's going to time out. If I pick up phone, dial tone, but I pick up another one down here, silence until I hang this one up. And then the line finder goes and finds me and goes, oh, you're waiting for a dial tone. I have one for you. But I can uh, stack up weighted calls. Uh, actually, I should be. No, I'm third in line. This one's second. Ooh, look at that. Oh, there we go. That's the timeout. So, and then this phone gets silence. Oh, that won't uh, find a line. We have to wait a bit. They're a thermal relay, so they take a second to reset. I can hear that go tick. You can see I paid a whopping $7.50 for that, which uh, was a smoking deal. Because people typically want more for old phones these days. Yeah, anyway. 